President Cyril Ramaphosa has unveiled the expanded SAPS Forensic Science Biology Laboratory. The expansion is a response to a major backlog in crime scene DNA analysis. So let's find out if and how this will then help uh, from Vanessa Lynch from DNA for Africa, who joins me this morning to take this conversation forward. Vanessa, thank you so much for your time and a very warm good morning to you. Um, I think first let's start with the backlog that exists. Even though Police Minister Begi Kele assured that they're doing all they can to address the backlog, but from the the data you have at your disposal, how's it looking like to date? Um, a, a good good morning. A good catalyst is to ask the prosecuting authorities whether the cases are actually coming through. And we have it on good authority from the DNA task team that is set up in the NPA that they are now getting cases that are coming through. Granted, they probably are prioritized, but it does show that there has been um, alleviation in terms of that backlog. I think realistically, all forensic science laboratories throughout the world suffer from a degree of a backlog. But I do think that recent developments um, have really shown that there's been a commitment to getting through that backlog and going forward that that will not happen again. Mm. Uh, uh, Vanessa, what informed the backlog to begin with? Uh, it was actually the contracts expired. So there were two-year mm. contracts that were expired and Scope had got involved with regards to um, certain corruption or allegations of corruption. And so for a period of 18 months, these, these tenders weren't awarded. Um, and you can imagine in a country with so much crime, how the backlog very quickly um, accumulates when you haven't got instruments that are being serviced because there are no contracts and you don't have consumables to run those, those particular samples. So once they got those awarded, they were not only dealing with the incoming cases, but they had this massive backlog that had accumulated um, in the meantime. Yeah. So th th that's actually what, and, and they also had a battle with funding, but now we've got funding to the, to the SAPs and they've just entered into five year contracts, um, I believe for the first time, which shows that for a period of five years, you will have a continuous um, consumable supply and a continuous um, um, service uh, contract in place for the instrumentation. And that's really positive and we have yeah. to give credit where credit's Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of credit, I mean, we're talking now about the lab expansion and its significance. Perhaps share with us why this is so important to take note of. You know, as South Africans, I know we, we deal with a lot, but we have three amazing forensic science laboratories. Um, the, the only in, in, the, in the entire continent, we, we really are streets ahead in terms of that. Um, and this latest laboratory that's been opened in the Eastern Cape is state of the art. And it's a fully, fully um, functional processing laboratory from evidence recovery right through to the analysis of the particular sample, as well as difficult samples. And, um, you know, looking at this um, terrible tragedy in, in the CBD in Johannesburg, where a lot of the um, people that, that have died in that fire actually are from Malawi, where they've got no forensic capacity whatsoever. And South Africa will really be able to assist in identifying um, those, those um, um, bodies that, that um, obviously are going to be found in, in the ruins of the fire. Mm, so mm. we really do have the forensic capacity, we have the expertise, and now we have even more capacity to be able to assist in disasters such as these, as well as to um, start really identifying perpetrators of crime in this country. Yeah, and I think it's the turnaround crime, right, that is at the heart of, um, you know, the, 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 the progress made, or at least the efforts being made to try and ensure that there continues to be strides in addressing this backlog. Because oftentimes the backlog was informed uh, by the pace at which results we, we were received or the analysis took. But uh, how can we expect this to turn around when it comes once again to the turnaround time from uh, DNA analysis? Well, the interesting thing is that when you are processing samples at a greater speed, you are identifying the perpetrators much earlier. So it, it, it also means because we are so fortunate that we have DNA laws and we have a DNA database, that as soon as they add a profile into that database, they have the ability and the methodology to identify who that person is. And we've seen that we can link one person to as much as 30 crimes. And, and this means that we can hopefully capture that person, take them off the streets and prevent them from continuing, especially um, we, we have a high prevalence of rape. Mm. So you can imagine the, the functionality of the database is largely dependent on how many profiles you're adding in. And that's dependent on how many profiles are being, um, how many samples are being analyzed in the laboratory. So it all works together in conjunction. And we really do see results when it's functioning correctly, which it was before the backlog existed. We really do see that the identification of perpetrators brings these um, serial offenders to book, which is so important.
Yeah. Uh, and just before I let you go, Vanessa, could this be the beginning of perhaps even more labs, more expansions when it comes to laboratories? I mean, you did mention that even though we're going through a lot, uh, very key to also note the strides that we're making. Now we have this uh, biology, uh, you know, forensic lab expansion, but surely it's opening doors for more so that, uh, you know, an issue about DNA backlog could be a thing of the past. Absolutely. I think that the, the health um, department needs to maybe look at in their mortuaries, having their own facilities where yeah. they can do their own forensic DNA profiling, like, like we're seeing today. And, and, and it's not just crime. You know, there's a huge humanitarian aspect of, of DNA identification, as we're seeing with these fires. That's probably going to be the only methodology um, with a highly degraded samples that they're going to be able to identify who those people are. Mm. So, yes, I think Public private partnerships, I think, with the more trees being able to do their own forensic DNA analysis, we really can um, continue to progress and, and utilize this incredible technology where we need it in South Africa so desperately. Thank you so much for speaking to me this morning. Vanessa Lynch, DNA for Africa Director, uh, speaking more about uh, the expansion of the forensic lab. Such good news for South Africa, especially in addressing DNA backlog in the country.